Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Asheville. Today I'm at the EVZ Center in Verd, Germany to review a state-of-the-art Mercedes 100% electric truck. So here we are underneath. Let's get going. I'm at top speed. I can't hear anything. Really smooth, really quiet. As we strive towards a sustainable future, it is essential we look at alternative forms of energy. Now in my sector and many other sectors, transportation going green will massively reduce our carbon footprint, but what are the compromises? Without further ado, I'm just gonna get into the electrical stuff because that is why we're here. In the fully electric range, we have two options. The 300, which has three batteries, and the 400, which has four batteries. Now today, I'm gonna be reviewing a 300 19-ton 4x2. Now the total install capacity is 336 kilowatts per hour. That's because each battery is 112 kilowatts per hour. Now the reason I'm telling you this is I'm trying to compare this with a standard diesel truck. So really I would be talking about the size of the liters on the fuel tank. So in this configuration, it is claimed that you'll get up to 300 kilometers, which is 186 miles. If you look at the 400, which as I says, has four batteries, you can get 400 kilometers, which is 250 miles. So where are these batteries and how much do they weigh? Well, each of them weighs 750 kilos and they are mounted on the chassis side to side. But let's go underneath to get a better look. So here we are underneath and they fit nicely on the chassis and they are roughly about 2.2 meters wide. Now it's time to talk about charging, but to do that, let's go round to a charger. Can't hear anything. Feels like I'm coasting. Feels a little bit strange not to have the diesel engine chugging away. Let me explain to you how charging works. There's a maximum charge which the truck can accept. Irrespective of what we have here or how much power we have, the maximum on this truck is 160 kilowatts. So with 160 kilowatts, this truck will charge from 20% to 80% in an hour and 15 minutes. If we had a smaller charging station here at 22 kilowatts, it would take 10 hours to get to 80% and 13 hours to get to 100%. Think about this, like going to the petrol station and filling with diesel. If you go to the commercial pump, the flow per minute of the diesel is much faster. So you're gonna fill your tank quickly. If you take it to the normal car pump, it's gonna take a lot longer because the flow per minute is a lot slower. It's charging. Now there's a six year warranty on all the batteries here and Mercedes will replace them if something goes wrong. Mercedes also have a recuperation system on these. So when you're braking, you're actually developing more charge to charge your batteries back up. When you've had enough charge, you just need to press this button, press the key, wait to hear the click, and then you pull it out. So the configuration is a 4x2. Now it's a two-speed automatic gearbox. Now this is generally the part where I go into talking about how many liters the engine is and how much brake horsepower. But it's not actually an engine, it's a motor. But if we want to compare like for like, we need to do a little conversion. So this is 330 kilowatts. So if we times that by 1.34, the equivalent with a normal diesel lorry would be brake horsepower of 442. When we pop the hood, I bet you thought you were gonna see a motor here. So did I. But no, in this area, we have the low voltage batteries. Now you still need to have these even though you have the high voltage batteries further back. So from the batteries, we go into two inverters. Then we go into two e-motors, which power the axle. And we have two cooling systems on the truck. So one of the cooling systems cools the high voltage batteries and the other cooling system cools the e-motors and inverters. Lighting wise, we have a mix of LEDs and halogens and these mirrors are the Generation 2 mirror cam. We did a previous review of a Mercedes Actros where we showed you Generation 1. Now I'm about to step into the cab, but before I tell you anything about the interior, I really need to drive this because ultimately that's why we're all here. Hold on a minute. Wrong truck. 
All right, let's try that again. Right, this is my first test. Now you've seen in the past with truck reviews, I did a road test. Today, I'm gonna to test it on the track. Now I can actually really put my foot down and it's in a much safer environment and I can go a lot faster for a lot longer. So I can really put this truck to the test. Okay, so let's get going. The first thing that I notice is that I can't hear anything. It sounds like when you're going between airport terminals, those electric trains that you go on, I, I, I can't hear a thing. We've sped up and all I can really hear is the wind. I'm gonna monitor this as I take it round the corner, how it reacts. Cause it's not a sharp bend, but you know, the whole corner is raised. I feel like I'm at the Nuremberg, but I'm just not going 200 miles an hour. I'm just not in a really expensive sports car. It's a bit disorientating that you can't hear the diesel engine. And with a diesel engine, you know, like you can put your foot down and you can feel it kicking down. So once I went from the first gear to the second gear, not a lot's happening. But what I did notice, it felt like a normal gearbox. The truck kind of moved forward as those gears shifted. I'm at top speed. I'm actually in power mode as well. My foot is to the floor completely and my kilometers of range has barely changed. I'm trying to slow down and speed up. The distribution of power, as soon as I put my foot down, something happens and I'm back up to top speed. Using my digital dashes, I have all the information I need. My mirror cams work perfectly. And bear in mind, I'm not used to driving, having the steering wheel on this side. Really good, really smooth, really quiet. It kind of takes a bit of the stress out of driving. You know, normally when you're driving, you can hear that engine underneath you. and It can be a bit noisy and you can feel it depending on the age of the truck. Sometimes you can feel the vibration underneath. Now, if you're going around driving a V8, of course, you, sometimes you want to feel that vibration. You want to feel that power. You're pulling a hundred ton load. But for something like this, what you're going to use for distribution in the city, this is really nice and perfect. And I think all the neighbors where you're doing deliveries, I think they might be a lot happier as well if they don't hear that diesel engine chugging outside their window. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna test this braking system. Let's see how we get on. Let's do this. Three, two, one from full speed. <laughs> Where else can I go and start doing that? Stop very sharply. They didn't throw me through the windscreen either. And I didn't feel the truck jumping around everywhere as well. I still maintained a straight line. Decent. After all that excitement, we have a split digital dash screen here. I have all my information on screen. Using this button here, I can move between the different functions. So our three functions to drive are power, economy, and range. We have full air conditioning. Everything can be used through this touchscreen panel. We have plenty of charging points for USB and cigarette lighters. Electronic handbrake, as you'd expect. We have storage above our head here. We have storage behind the chairs. Now I'm six foot five and it's comfortable enough. My vision, I'm quite comfortable with it. I think I'd move my chair up a little bit higher if I was out on the open road, but overall plenty of storage, very simple cab in my favorite color as well.
Now, how much will it cost? I cannot give you an exact figure, but what I will say, it is about three times as expensive as your diesel equivalent. An electric truck is a lot more than just buying a new truck. I think it's a case where you need to look at the infrastructure in your business. You need to look at the routes you're taking. You need to have a long, hard look at everything you're doing in your carbon footprint, because it's not just about putting a charging station in your workshop and getting one lorry. That's not going to change things. Ultimately, we are all going to need to have electric trucks. So the fact that we can see that this one works, it's a step in the right direction. Learning more and more about the truck, I feel it's important to point out that there is a compromise. If you have more batteries, you have more range, you can go further. However, you have less of a payload because you need more batteries. If you'd like a heavier payload, you have to have less batteries, but then you've got less range. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Do I think this truck could do long journeys through Europe? No but I do believe that this truck has a place in central built up areas, doing multi-drops, doing waste management work, anyone doing skips, grabs. Is everybody ready for a truck like this? At the moment, I would say no, but it's something that is now on our radars and after driving this, I will say that I know electric trucks do work. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a video where we review a Mercedes Arox Tipper and click here to see a video where we test the Mercedes emergency braking system. I went round a lot faster than that. A lot faster. <laughs>